What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. As y'all can tell, I am in my backyard at my basket. Um, we are going to talk about putting. Um, I know that I talk about this a lot in my videos anyways, just when I'm out playing and talking about my breathing and my process and everything. But today I kind of wanted to um, just make one video that contains all of that stuff because um, just for the fact that some people don't watch all of those videos and might miss out on some of my tips or anything like that. Um, I just wanted to make one of these, especially since I feel like my putting has gotten um, significantly better and more confident. And when you're confident putting, you're gonna make more putts, just plain and simple. Um, and so we're just gonna go over a lot of, um, a lot of those things. Now, obviously like one of the tips that people say a lot for putting to get better is to practice. Um, I don't really come out here and putt that much, if I'm honest. Um, I don't really come out and practice putting much. I do play a lot more than most people because I can play during the week and go out and film rounds. Um, I play like two rounds a week or whatever. Um, and so that's kind of my putting practice, but I don't really come out here um, as much as I used to. And so while, while practice is important, I think there are some other things that are significantly more important. Um, obviously the, the first of those is finding a putter that you love. I putt with uh, zero medium keystones um, and I absolutely love them. It's an understable putter so I can release it. Um, I come from here and go up and release flat and that allows me to um, kind of let it glide. It also has good glide. I don't know, two five negative one one is what the keystone is. Um, so first, finding a putter that you enjoy that fits your grip because the grip is another thing. Um, some people will putt like this with just their finger on the edge of the disc. Um, and then you'll see people like Paul who put it on just the bottom right here. Like you'll see him kind of, he, he points his finger and does this. And then you have people who do more of like a fan grip. For me, I used to putt like this, um, but I recently started putting like this where this finger is hooked around um, and the edge of the disc goes into uh, kind of this uh, slit on my finger right there. And that allows me to generate a little bit of spin. It also allows me to hold the disc a little bit more secure in my hand. Um, even if I'm not like gripping it tight, uh, the pressure from my thumb and then the fact that it's kind of locked in right here um, helps it feel really comfortable in my hand. So grip is another really important one, obviously. Um, and then stance too. There's a couple of different stances for putting. And the interesting thing is, um, is that there will be times when you're playing where you'll pretty much have to do all of them. You'll have to know all of them. If you're stuck behind a tree and you need to uh, straddle putt, which honestly, if you're trying to figure out a putt and you feel comfortable straddle putting, that's awesome because you can pretty much always use a straddle putt. Uh, if you're stuck, like if, if you if you putt like I do, like this, and there's a tree right in front of me, then I'm in I'm in bad I'm I'm, I'm in trouble. But if you have a straddle putt and you putt like this, and there's a tree in front of you, then you just do this, and you're still good. Um, but you can't always do that with that forward facing. So um, straddle putting is really good. Definitely something that you should practice and know. Sorry if you guys can hear some construction uh, noise in the background, but. Straddle putting is really good. For me, I use kind of a, more of a straight forward, um, but there's a couple of these too. So there's some people who stand up like really straight and kind of rock back on their, their knee, which gives them the power to move forward, that rocking motion. You'll kind of see that with Emerson Keith, how he does this sort of thing and tucks in and that creates the momentum there. Um, and then there's uh, people like me who a lot of times I'll step way further back and I'll push off instead of like really, like I can't, I can't rock back like that because my leg's already pretty much extended. But if you're right here, how Emerson does, then you can rock back and get into um, your position there and, and feel like you can really push it towards the basket. And then you have people like Ricky who do more of a, more of a stagger stance um, because he likes to bring the disc back between his legs through here and pop it up into, into the basket. Um, and so stance is obviously super important, but 
what's really important to think about is where you get your power in order to get to the basket because there's lots of different ways to do that as well like i was saying there's the rocking back and forth motion which creates that momentum forward um, there's spin putts where you you like actually spin it a lot and then there's more push putts where you come from down here and more like push it towards the basket um, and then there's uh, more glidey putts which is kind of what i do um, where I'm not really forcing it to the basket. It's more of a glide where I just release it and it kind of just glides to the basket. Um, and so that's based off of the height. So obviously sometimes that's not good if you have a low ceiling and you kind of have to tuck down. Um, with people like uh, KJ, he gets his power from squatting down and blowing out, getting that aggressive athletic motion. Um, and then Ricky, who gets back like this and goes in between his legs. So like he has this full motion of his arm to putt with. Um, and so knowing where your power comes from and how, if you're comfortable getting your power from that place is important as well. Um, for me, mine comes from two different places, like I said. It's super glidey, but um, Yuli also taught me um, this motion of going from sideways. You'll see this with his putts as well. He, ho he holds his more up here. Um, I hold mine like out in front of me, but it's that same motion of starting off here. And as you come up, that popping of the wrist from, from hyzer to flat is what generates a lot of spin in order to get it to the basket. Um, obviously I know I didn't make that. Um, and then also there's power from your back foot as well lifting that foot up and fully extending, creating almost a straight line from the tip of your hand to the back of your foot um, is another very important way to do uh, that as well. So those are some of the things just to keep in mind as you're kind of figuring your putt out, whether you're um, not happy with your current putt and you're trying to learn a new putt or you're just kind of trying to, to tweak your current putt, whatever it may be. Um, those are a lot of different things you need to think about. Obviously the putter, the stance, and then where you get your power from, whether that's push or spin or between the legs, like KJ getting a real good, like athletic and just like popping it into the basket. Um, but for me, the biggest thing, and this is what I, I always talk about in my videos is being fluid, like having a, not only a consistent routine is important, um, but having a consistent, just, I guess routine, but a consistent motion with no hitches in it. Sometimes you'll hear people talk about how someone had a hitch in their putt, which means that they like, like kinda like, it's not, it's not a fluid motion. Um, if you guys watch my putts, you'll see that they're very, very fluid. Um, but for me, after watching Kevin Jones putt, um, I've always been an athlete and I've always loved playing sports competitively. And um, whether that was baseball, basketball, football, whatever. Um, and then breathing is very important in athletics. And a lot of times it's easy to, to think that like disc golf isn't a sport or it isn't an athletic thing, but you need to do athletic things in order to be good at disc golf a lot of times. Um, and so I, I watched KJ and he has a very um, compact breath, if that makes sense. It's, it's like a like a very athletic, like as if he were doing like a leg press or something like that. For me, I use my breath as pace, not power. So for him, he uses his breath, his breath as pace, um, or he uses his breath as power. It's a, it's a release of energy into the putt. But for me, I use mine as pacing. So it's a, a very consistent, like, and that just makes me stay really smooth in my putt. And grab more of them. That one popped up. And so that pacing right there, obviously I'm, I'm rushing those for the video and not going through my full routine or whatever, but that pacing, man. So uh, my phone overheated in the backyard. <laughs> 
So now we're hanging out inside. Um, I was talking about pacing. Uh, that pacing is so important just for uh, consistency's sake. You know, you always hear people talk about having a routine. And yes, it is very important to have a routine. But that routine needs to have a pace. So it's not just, okay, my routine is I grab my chalk bag, I flip it around, and then I go. Like it needs to be a very specific pace of a routine. A paced out routine is a good routine. Um, sometimes if you're nervous, like people always talk about tournaments, they're like, how do I deal with this during tournaments? It's like pacing, pacing. Pacing is so important, especially with putting in tournaments. You need to <sighs> slow down and you need to go through your motions at the rate that you always go through them. During tournaments, a lot of, or during stressful rounds or uh, competitive rounds where you and a friend are going at it and you start getting nervous. You have to get those nerves out of the picture and you need to be able to just putt. You need to slow down and you need to go through the pace of your routine. So a well-paced routine is a good routine. Um, and so that's super important as well. And then one other thing that I wanted to just kind of talk about real quick as well, um, because I'm not going over the, the typical tips that you hear with putting. Everybody's heard those. They're important, but I'm trying to talk about other stuff. Um, a lot of times people will say, pick a chain link and this will help. Uh, try and hit a chain link. But that doesn't always necessarily work for everybody's style. Because of the putter that I use, I aim left. If I aim at the middle of the basket, I miss right. Um, and that doesn't mean that I need to change my putt at all because my putt's consistent. I love my putt, it's exactly where I want it to be. I need to change where I'm aiming. Just because there's a middle of a basket doesn't mean that you have to be looking right at the link in the middle of the basket. You have to know what your putt is going to do and be consistent with that and then adjust your aim point. It's just like calibration with, uh, I don't know, say a sniper or something who's really far away. They're not gonna aim directly at the person. They're gonna aim above them or they're gonna like, you know what I'm saying? So. For me, I know that if I aim at the middle of the basket and I putt and go through that motion, I'm gonna miss to the right. I just know that. So I aim at the left chain and depending on how far away I am, I go up a couple links. So again, that's along with that whole uh, sniper thing, like aiming far away, you calibrate it and you adjust it depending on how far you are. You don't add more power or anything like that. Sometimes you'll add more power if you're like 40 or 50 feet out, but you'll see me on a lot of these long putts throwing from far away, still going through my same motion, not forcing the disc there, just aiming a little bit higher. As I back up, I just move my aim point higher, still aiming at the left of the basket. If I am further away, I know that the disc is gonna be in the air for a little bit longer, so it's gonna glide a little bit. So I might actually aim a little bit more to the right because I know it'll give the disc a little bit of time to come back when if I'm within the circle, I aim all the way left because otherwise it doesn't give it time to come back. Um, and so, yeah, sure, you can pick a chain link to aim at, but you don't need to try and hit a chain link. You don't always have to try and hit a chain link. You can find one to aim at, but you need to know what your disc is going to do. Like if I throw an understable disc on an Anheuser, I aim directly at a tree. I'm looking right at a tree. I'm throwing at that tree on Anheuser because I know when my disc comes out of my hand, it's gonna miss that tree because of the Anheuser. Um, and so find a point that helps you make the basket. You don't always have to hit that point. In fact, I never hit the point that I'm aiming at. I always miss the point, but I make the putt. And that's what's important. Um, so yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. Hope that you learned a little bit. Thank you for watching. You guys are the best. See you on the next one. Peace out.